We'll come into overtime right here on the Sports Objective. I'm Dave Richmond. Ladies and gentlemen, the ladies' man, Kyle Barber. How are you, man? What's going on, Dave? Uh, the Pirates are seven and one. That is the most twenty twenty thing ever. <laughs> Pirates get the big win over Tulane, sixty eight fifty eight. Bubba Rose's mom. What's up, dude? Multitasking. Um, excited to talk some Pirate basketball. Uh, also watching BYU and UCF and the Boca Raton Bowl. I need to turn that on. <laughs> no doubt about it. And uh, looks like BYU up early, so we'll see how that plays out. The Cougars. Uh, the Cougs, I guess, want to get a chance to have some payback, I guess, after the Coastal Carolina game. Kyle, uh, very excited about Pirates being 7-1, and one, uh, year three under Joe Dooley. He, the program is starting. You remember two years ago, I'll bring this up. You remember when Sean Williams went out on the suspension? And yes. you were like, man, if we had him, we could have probably, you know, maybe have one loss or we – and, and uh, now, yeah, I remember that we would have beaten Charlotte. We'd have beaten App State. Yep. Yeah. And now we have a situation, as I was mentioning to Coach, we're winning the games we should win, and we're winning the 50-50 games. I mean, the first time in modern history that you win your non-conference, all your non-conference games go undefeated. Um, that's exactly what this program needed. And then tonight we get the first – Conference and we, win and we the, dominated Tulane. That was that yeah. was the cool thing about it. I mean, yeah. they they cut it to ten. At one point, we were up by nineteen. That was a dominant performance against a a a a, a competent basketball team, a, a league game. We were a five point favorite. That's it, and we dominated that basketball game. And it still, I don't think we played our potential on the offensive end. Defensively, we played fantastic. But I, I mean, that's just what's so exciting about it is, you know, I, I really think we're going to have a, a winning season. And if they play in NIT, have a chance to potentially make the NIT. I really think that could be a real possibility. Yeah. Ron yeah. Hunter at two lanes, a tremendous coach and uh, he's doing a nice job there and uh, we'll do a nice job there in the long haul. I really believe that. Um, but um a thing you, Kyle, you talk about how we led by 19 there. Oh, about seven minutes into the second half. What was impressive to me is Tulane very quickly in about three and a half to four minutes uh, chopped it down to 10. And you're thinking in the past, um, you know, it would have been a one or two possession game in a heartbeat, but it never got below 10. Uh, we, we, we kept them at arm's length, uh, much like we did James Madison it's, and um, Tulane. This is a team. Yes, they're, they're kind of like not quite as extreme. I'm not sure how many transfers they have. I know they have a lot. So they're still learning how to play together. But uh, this is a team that has a lot more athleticism than I've seen Tulane teams have in recent years. Yeah, they got a lot of transfers. They got a kid and, and got a kid from um from Nebraska that was starting in the Big Ten last year and doing very well. I think he led the Big Ten in rebounds, maybe. Um, so he uh or at least of all freshmen, I think he led the Big Ten in rebounds. Um so they got some talent, a lot of transfers. They're learning how to play together. They were six and one, just like we were, I believe. So uh, it's a quality win. The way we won was what was so impressive to me. In the past, we would have struggled. And uh, Bubba, you know, this is a or game lost. that we would, or lost by, you know, a bucket, a you know, buzzer beater a few years ago. Uh, you know, we're in the Pirates, so we struggled against them, would win it or lose it by a bucket or two. This time they, they took care of business there. Seven and one. The beautiful thing about this two guys is that they got that win at home. They got a little bit of chance to go home for Christmas break, and they're going to come back. And they have um, here. It was it next week. They'll have uh, what was it Monday night or Tuesday? They'll have uh, Wichita State coming up. Yeah, Wednesday is Wednesday. Wednesday. Night. I'm sorry, thank you, pardon. Yeah. Wednesday, December thirtieth, and the Pirates will be out in Wichita. Uh, what is a six o'clock tip off on ESPN Plus? Yeah, but um, yeah, Coach Dooley said the guys will be brought back in uh, the day after Christmas, and then they'll start getting ready for Wichita on the twenty sixth. Yeah, you got the boys uh, are smart, you know, and it's not even about being smart. You sometimes it's, you're just around family, and somebody could have COVID. So let's hope you know we don't run into any of those issues with guys being around family and friends for Christmas, and we can we can make that trip to Wichita. Guys, we have several folks uh, chiming in on Facebook Live. I appreciate them. Um, Matt Semenza, 
um, former pirate linebacker and slash defensive end, um, chiming in saying very nice win. Also um, part of our team, Brendan Shapiro, um, saying uh, Tulane's no longer a pushover. Def- definitely not. Yeah. And then uh, Johnny Gardner uh, says, you can see it happening. The foundation of defense and ball movement is being put in place. And I've waited a long time to see this take place. The, the world ain't ready. <laughs> Shapiro, um, not to, not to, to gloss over his comment there, to Johnny's comment, but back to Shapiro, I, I asked Sunhalter, Jay Sunhalter, to throw something at your cutout uh, at the uh, at Minji's. Um, I, I don't know that he did. He probably didn't. Jay's a pretty nice guy, but I asked him to. Yeah, we're getting ready to get him on any second now, so – We'll do that right now for Jay. And uh, Jay Sunhalter is going to be joining us any minute. Appreciate uh, all the support he's given the, our show over the years. And um, Jason Halter, right? That's right. That's yeah. Jay Sunhalter's alias, Jason Halter. The, the, only, the, only, the only tight end calling basketball. Well, he played. He did play the sport, so it's not like he doesn't know anything about basketball. But, well, yes. Of course. Uh, of course. But it's still funny to say it. Great win by him. A great win by the Pirates, and we're going to go. We're going right now. How many wins would you say, based on what we're doing now? How many wins do you think we will get at the end of the year? I have no idea, dude. I hate to put a number on it at this point. Um, how many games are we playing? Total. So we got eighteen more. We have. We have eight. No, twenty-six. To, we have. Yeah, unless we pick one up, and we got twenty-six. Okay, I'm going to say uh, 16. We have 18 10. left. 16 and 10. All right. What do you think, Bubba? Uh, Kyle, read, Kyle read my mind um, to, to use a phrase that you like to go to there, Dave. Um, but uh, I, I really believe that I, I think we'll definitely have a winning season because you look at it at this point, um, if we don't add any more games – we obviously have to go. That would be just going seven and eleven down the stretch, and I certainly think that we'll do that. Uh, but hopefully, we'll um, blow that out of the water. I think Kyle's probably on uh, somewhere um, in, in the ballpark there. You know, fifteen to seventeen wins. Hopefully, that's what I thought. Fifteen. So. Well, six, do, you, do you guys think sixteen and ten will get us an NIT r- a bit, or would we have that's pretty close. In the tournament? <clears throat> Potentially, yeah. Uh, and de- depending on who the wins are over, and yeah, and yeah. If we could get a win over Houston, would be nice. But that's a tough order. And, and then maybe you pick you, up. When you think pick about up. it, um, sixteen wins. And right now, we're one and one in the league. Um, yeah. If if we don't add any more games, that would mean that we go ten and ten in conference play. So, wow. Uh, I, I think I don't know. I think that'd be close. I, I think we probably would need to to win 11 or 12, but who knows? It would be an excellent problem to have. Yeah, and, exactly. then, and, and maybe you win 16, and then you win three in the tournament and something like that. But, uh, I mean, and, and who knows? Some teams may opt out of – you know, that could be a situation again, uh, Bubba, Dave, where if you don't make the NCAA tournament, you could have a lot of teams opting out of the NIT, um, just like we had in football. So, you know, hopefully we'll be in a better situation with COVID by the end, but you never know. Right now, we'd like to welcome in um, uh, the guy who is on the call tonight, uh, Jay Sunhalter, former East Carolina tight end and ESPN Plus analyst. Jay, how are you? Hey, I'm good, guys. Sorry for the delay. Just uh, leaving the facility now. But a big win for, wow. uh, for the Pirates. The question, Jay, was a great victory. Uh, what were your takes from the game tonight? Well, I mean, I think East Carolina – it's evident uh, how much they've improved and how much they keep it better. And last year compared to this year, it's night and day difference. Uh, but what you see is shooting the ball, taking good shots, and then playing defense. And the thing that impresses me most is how hard they're playing defense and how they're slowing down their opponents. Jay, we all thought we would win this game or at least did a good chance to win this game. But I thought it was going to be a dog fight. Were you surprised with the way the Pirates dominated the game? I, I was pleasantly surprised, yeah, because I, I – I thought it was going to be a close ball game. And ECU, there was never really any threat there in the second half. Tulane clawed back a couple times, but ECU was in the driver's seat. And I just think that, like, you know, you look at Gardner, you know, he had a big ball game. You know he's going to have big nights. But who's going to step up? And the Pirates are having three or four guys really contribute 
big time numbers of production, and that's that's what's nice to see. Yeah, Dave. When, in, sorry, Dave. Um, I just wanted very quickly uh, piggyback on what Jay was talking about there in the second half when. And, you know, we had led by eight at halftime, 33-20, excuse me, 32-25, seven-point lead at halftime. And then uh, th that lead ballooned to 49-30 um, with about 13-20 remaining in the ball game. And from that point, Jay, um, you know, Tulane used an 11-2 run to slice that down to 10 uh, with plenty of time remaining. And so one of the things that stood out to all three of us, and I'm sure it did you as well, on the call was just the way we never let that lead get below 10. You know, Jaden Gardner, I think, had four quick points, and the other guys made plays as well. Yeah, I mean, like, for me, in basketball, it's a game of runs. Like, can you make big runs? And then can you limit your opponent's runs? And how bad will their runs be? And you know, East Carolina went up big runs on their own, and then, like, when Tulane tried to get back in the ball game, it was never a situation where you know, East Carolina – like, let it, like, continue to be – to have the lead eaten into. They always kind of had a cap it right at 10 points. They played really hard, and whenever Tulane got on the run, they found a way to get a turnover or make a shot and stop the momentum. That's yeah, the key the, right there. I'm sorry, ahead, Kyle. Dave. I was just going to say <clears throat> the, the key for me was the very fact of the poise of this team, Jay. I was looking at that very thing. In the second half, when uh, Tulane, you knew Tulane was going to make a run. Uh, the question is, how would the Pirates react to that run? And we answered, and we we didn't make the mistakes. The turnovers this year, like we, uh, the turnovers last year, just were such a huge problem. But I think what it comes down to is our team is older. We have another year. I, last year was our COVID year because we were all guys were just. I don't know if it was awkward is the right word, but. Just because they're good players and you put them together doesn't mean it's going to make a great team. They needed the chemistry. They needed the time together. They COVID actually helped us, I think, individually uh, for the players getting better, working on their skills. As J.J. Miles will have that audio for you later on in the show. But um, I think that was a great point is that they couldn't play together. But individually, there was a lot of stuff they could work on, Jay. I mean, I'm amazed at how much they individually have gotten better. I mean, you look at these guys compared to where they were last year. There's multiple guys. I mean, just go down the roster. Even right. Jaden Gardner, how much he's gotten better in you know, developing his jump shot. So these guys individually have gotten better. But now, like, they're playing so well as a unit. And the kind of rotation is starting to come in, you know, where they go to the bench. And I said on the broadcast, I really feel like they have, like, eight starters. You know, there's – there's a couple guys on the bench that could be starting and they're interchangeable. So there's a really good kind of mix and match that Coach Dooley can use with different matchups. Jay, we finally have a good basketball team. We're seven yeah. and one. <laughs> we're, se yeah. we're seven and one. You know, who knows what the season's gonna bring? We we were we were uh we were, you know, prognosticating how many wins we thought we would have and could we make an NIT run, you know, I didn't even think an NCA at this point. And it is a shame. The shame is a shame. We probably have a good basketball team, but no fans, no students. Yeah. I mean, that's that's the sad part about it is, like, if this were normal times, Minji's would be rocking right now. Oh, yeah. And and it's been, you know, it's been a long time since there's been, you know, the enthusiasm, but a team that is, you know, really kind of uh, come out here on fire the way the Pirates have. And I just wish that you know, this season it was normal times. The good thing is – you know, this team is going to be good this year. They're going to be even better next year and the year after. Joe Dooley's got things rolling, and the recruits he's got coming in, the experience that these guys are getting this year, and the amount of guys coming back next year. I mean, the Pirates are going to be here to stay in basketball. That's great. Yeah, usually this is like a, usually like this is a uh, like a 2013 kind of 14 kind of thing where where you have a good year. Or maybe two years that are good, and it's like almost like a flash in the pan, Jay. But Dooley and Rock and all those guys, all the whole coaching staff and the the support staff, they're making it where, like you said, they're building a foundation where it's going to be more than just that quote unquote flash in the pan like we've had in the past. Yeah. Uh, they're fundamentally sound. I mean, like, uh, like I'm so impressed, like how they've improved so much in the past couple games. Like they're taking really good shots. They're not turning the ball over. They're making smart decisions. 
And, like, when you watch this game, East Carolina dictated everything to Tulane. That is under. Yeah, Jay cut out on us there. But what he was saying is how the Pirates. Yeah, there. The game. yeah we, where would you, Jay? You were saying how we dictated the game. Yeah, yeah, we dictated the game. And, you know, when they play like they did tonight, and you have that defensive pressure, when you go against the quote unquote teams that were, you know, predicted to finish at the top of the league, East Carolina is going to have a chance because of their defense and the ability to like shut down opponents and limit their, their shot opportunities. And Tulane shot in the 30 percentile from the field tonight. Yeah. And anytime you can play good defense, you're going to have a chance because you don't have to score as many points. So it makes things easier. And we, but we have the ability to score. I, I still don't think we yeah. played up to our potential on the offensive end. So one of these nights, we're going to play up to our potential on offense. And if we're playing good defense that night, too, it could get ugly for somebody. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, you look at tonight and different guys stepped up. And Newton had a big game the other night. And he was a little bit more quiet. But Jackson had a big game tonight. But if you get everybody, I mean, you're right, Kyle. If you get everybody kind of all having big games, I mean, this – this team on the offensive end can be really tough, tough yep. to slow down. That's the thing that impresses me is the fact that he was talking about the different guys. I mean, it just amazes me with uh, the talent. You look at J.J. Miles. Uh, he's a guy that we uh, are hoping for last year. And now he's making – he's not that he was bad last year. You can, But I'm saying he's better and you look at a guy that was disappointing. Uh, he was disappointed with this game last year. But Tumba Baruti, look how hard he's worked. And I tell you, Jay, yeah, I know he had nine in the first, I believe, in the first half. But uh, if they could find the one person that's left for me, and we'll get Jay back on, is Tyree Pig Jackson. If, if Jackson can find a way to be con- uh, consistent, uh, I think Coach is saying. He shots tonight in the first half. Right. If he can. If he can uh, step up every single night like that, uh, we know that he's got a great game. He's got a lot of talent. And the second half, there was two threes that rimmed out that he had, unfortunately, but um, where he would have had more points, he would have had about 15. But anyway, uh, very happy to see him get, especially for him personally, uh, for Tyree and for the the team. Pig having nine points was great to see tonight. We got Jay back, guys. Do we uh, Jay, do we want uh, to keep talking? Do we want to keep talking to, to, to Jay, or do, are we ready to go to Dooley's comments, or, or what are we doing? Yeah, we'll go to Coach you know, Joe Dooley here pretty shortly, but something I was going to chime in with, uh, you know, uh, when we talked about how it's the sixth consecutive victory over Tulane. Um, something else that maybe want to put this graphic up now uh, for those folks who are tuned in live on, on Facebook as well as our YouTube channel. You know, Dave made that comment as far as feeling like we, you know, we have seven or eight different guys that can start, and you've really seen the scoring come along. And you have Dane Garner, who's of course averaging 18 and a half points a game. You have DJ Miles, who finished with 13 tonight, and he's averaging 10 and a half. And then you also have Batumba Broody. Um, let's see, Batumba Broody, who am I leaving out? Um, Tristan, Tristan Newton, and then. Um, also, also another, um, as I'm distracted here, um, <laughs> but, but eight, eight point four points. Yeah, yeah, Brandon Suggs, and eight point four points to ten and a half points uh, for each of those three guys. So, um, the scoring is really coming along, and uh, we we can see four or five guys averaging in double figures here very soon. And how about the defense, guys? How about the defense that is so? Um, one of the things I want to mention to you, Jay, and, uh, and Kyle and, and Bubba, is how Coach Houston talks about football, how they actually chart what they call loafs, and that's where they take plays off from, for example, on defense or offensively. They're, in other words, they're not going at 100%. In this particular case for basketball, Dooley, I wonder if he does the same thing when the guys take it take it easy on defense. They don't try very hard. But I'll tell you one thing. Um, th- this is one of the most complete nights I've seen is under the Dooley era with uh, not taking it, taking it easy or taking some plays off on defense. What did you guys think? Yeah, I thought so. I mean, they with a lot of intensity. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that, Jay. A little bit of a lag there. Um, 
taking a look at some of the, the team numbers uh, since we're talking about the defensive effort tonight by the Pirates. And you, you see there um, we held Tulane 19 out of 54 from the floor, 35.2%. And uh, they came into the game averaging 28 three-point field goal attempts per ball game, and they were right on that. And then they, they shot 27 tonight, eight out of 27, so just below 30%. And then the, the Green Wave um, were just 57.1 from the free throw line, 12 out of 21. And so an excellent defensive effort. And, uh, you, you know, you really see guys, um, the, the length that Coach Dooley and the staff have brought in uh, really paying off. And uh, another – thing that jumped out about the team stats is we out rebounded them 38 to 31. Oh, they're just no communicating question, right? really well. Sorry. Sorry, Dave. I was just going to say they're communicating really well on the defensive end and they're playing as a unit and they're closing out on their opponent's shooters. They're boxing out. I mean, I, I just, I don't see really any weaknesses on the defensive end. Um, anything that's sticking out, they've been solid. And how about the uh, Bubba? One of the things we talked about last year a lot coming into the night, uh, the three-point shooting has been a lot better. Uh, last year, I believe they averaged – you're the numbers guy, Bubba. Wasn't it 27%, something like that last year on average? It was and then, um, right there, 28 and a half, 29. And then this year it's already up to, I believe, 37%. Yeah, uh, it's been – I think coming into tonight's game, it was 37 and a half or so. And um, tonight we didn't shoot it as well. Um, put that back up there for just a moment. I think, we were, I think we were six out of 19 tonight. And uh, so 30, 31 and a half percent um, pretty much tonight. But um, yeah, on the whole, um, we were shooting it much better. And um, the guy that really shot it well tonight, um, two out of five, um, knocked down his first two and then his others were uh, looked like they were dead and went in and out for at least a couple of them. Now that, that was Pig Jackson. Um, it was really nice to see him shooting the ball with confidence. We mentioned that, Bubba, the very fact that um, he had he had two three pointers guys in the second half, Jay, that they looked like they were going in and they popped out. Uh, I want to say it was early in the second half or mid. Uh, it was. I don't think it was halfway through the second half, but. Uh, disappointed to see that for him because I, I easily thought that that could be – he was close to having 15 points. Instead, he has nine, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and he yeah, – you could just see his confidence building when he started making those shots. And they need him to hit hit outside shots that, uh, you know, that he's capable of making. And you know, I just think he's a guy that after tonight's ball game, I think you'll start to see him take off a little bit um, with his shooting. Taking a look at the individual numbers, um, we talked about how um, the Pirates have, you know, five guys averaging eight and a half points or more. Um, Jaden Gardner obviously leading the way, 18 and a half. Um, Jaden finished with his third double double of the season tonight, 21 and 10. You also had Brandon Suggs, 14 and four. Um, JJ Miles, uh, who we weren't sure if he was even going to play um, based on what we had been told. We told he was a day to day decision. Um, 13 points for J.J. and uh, knocking down some three-pointers at clutch times. And um, also, I mentioned Pig Jackson finished with nine points. Um, then leading the way for Tulane, you had Forbes with 16 and Watson with 14. Another thing that I wanted to mention, guys, I was thinking about during the game is when Jaden was struggling there. I think it was a time where he had four points. And then in the first half in 17, as Coach said, in the second half, so you had 21. But think about how many times that we saw Gardner with 30 points or he scored well into the 20s, and that's the only way that we could have a chance to win a game, you know, is for do uh, for for him just to take over the game and get like 28, 30 points in the game to have yeah. a chance to be, or just to stay competitive. Absolutely, and that's the way you felt Coach Dooley's first season and um, a large part of the year last year, but – now, um, like you've seen in multiple games this year, um, you, you, you've really seen um, people um, like Brandon Suggs the other night against James Madison step up with 18 points um, tonight. You had, yes, you had Jaden scoring 20 tonight, but um, you also had J.J. Miles um, finishing in double figures. And it's nice to see 
it's nice to see scoring coming from a variety of folks. Well, that that's uh, obviously huge because you get to score more points, right, Jay? But all, but also for me, what's uh, really surprised me is what the word used, the intensity you have for the intensity for there's I'm seeing double now me on the screen. <laughs> anyway, uh, the very fact that we have guys, multiple guys scoring. Will but the, Will the real Dave Richman please stand up? Exactly. Thank you, Eminem. Uh, but the very fact that we have uh, the defense intensity, Jay, that's just something right there that if they can keep that up, uh, they're going to be a tournament team. I really feel like it, NIT or the big dance. I really believe that. Well, I mean, that the defense they play with, yeah, even if they have an off-shooting night, even if they're going yeah. against a, maybe a better team, uh, as far as talent goes, like the defense is going to enable them to win those games or keep them in ball games. And I just think that like they're playing so hard, there's so much depth that they can stay fresh and, and everybody is playing up tempo um, on the offensive end, but they're matching that intensity also on the defensive end of the court. And Bubba, how many times in Jay that we talk about uh, the first year of Dooley, I heard guys, former players, fans, alums, everybody say, we have three good players, maybe, for the American, right? And now you have the depth of Dooley and Rock and all the coaches have built. It's impressive because now you have more than just warm bodies and just a few good players. You have, like you said, Jay, you've got potentially eight starters. So you've got a whole bunch of guys you can rotate. And before, you didn't have the option to go small. You were always small. So everybody knew what they had to prepare for. Yeah, and it sucks when you're always small. Uh, I just <laughs> think you, you can play with bigs. Obviously, we're having some technical issues here. Just think they can we got we got to get Jay something besides a track phone, guys. I mean, you would think between ESPN and his regular job, he'd be able to get something. It, he has a burner phone. Oh, it's, it's a burner <laughs> phone for the dollar store. God. Why are you using I'm Why innocent. are you using your burner phone to do this podcast, Jay? I mean, I'm 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 not. This is an iPhone 11. Oh, that's not your burner iPhone. phone. That's not his burner plus. phone, guys. Yeah. Who, who's yeah, your provider? Cool. Who's your cell provider? Yeah, AT&T. Ah, AT&T sucks in Eastern North Carolina. You got to have Verizon or U.S. Cellular. Yeah, I'm, I'm in the between Greenville and Wilson right now. Some kind of. Oh, that, yeah, that's a, that's the issue right there the most. Um, well, I mean, also AT&T, you know, in Eastern North Carolina, man, it's Verizon or U.S. Yeah. Cellular. You have issues. Yeah. Well, that's I because they've been around the longest, man. For my technology. <laughs> Oh, that's okay. AT and T. I mean, you, hey, it's just. It's just uh, I'm sure when you're in Raleigh, you're great with the AT and T. <laughs> it's crystal clear in Raleigh, but outside of that, I've been having issues. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but on the on the team, the other the other part about it is on the depth stuff. Uh, these guys are having to compete and practice for playing time because there is a lot of talent. So I think that's another huge aspect is just the internal competition to get out on the court. Right. Just like when Coach Shankweiler talked about for the football team, for the O-line, just because you're starting on a team doesn't mean that you're a good player. It just means you're the best one of, or the best one for the team. Yeah. But it doesn't mean that you're good. And <laughs> the thing with uh, the ECU is that there's a lot of good talent now. And, and Jay, what you were talking about, how about the recruiting classes they've got coming in? And then you have the COVID year, which means this is, uh, as Dooley calls it, a free year. So they're getting another year uh, to have Gardner potentially. Uh, so technically, he could have two junior years and a senior year. Yeah, I mean, can you imagine he he theoretically could have counting this year three years left. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy, crazy stuff. I don't know if he'll do that, but if he does, oh, no. that'll be. Yeah, uh, um, but we'll see how that plays out. How about uh, the comment uh, here, Bubba, from Johnny? Yeah, Johnny Gardner chiming in again. Uh, excellent point. And say, saying Dooley and Rock, uh, obviously referring to assistant coach Steve Rockefort, uh, having told the fan base time and time again what needs to be done, how they're going to go about doing it, and uh, now you can see them doing it. There, One of the things about this coaching staff 
that's always impressed me, Kyle and Jay and Bubba, is the very fact that they love to recruit. Um, no offense to other coaches, but it's kind of like if you're a minister and you don't like to, you don't visit, do visitation, like visit like people that are sick. There's just certain parts of a job that are must that you must do. And there's some coaches that don't like to recruit, which I think is crazy if you're in college sports. Um, but anyway, the, this group loves their, their recruiting nerds. They know every single, as Ty Seymour would say, they know every single player in North Carolina. They've heard about them, every small high school, every big high school. And uh, Coach Dooley even talked about last night on the show the very fact that how well, a lot of great talent in North Carolina. And then uh, with Coach Rock, He's from Texas, and we're getting a lot of Texas guys now. There's a nice pipeline uh, coming in, just like yep. a Tristan, Tristan uh, Newton. Yeah, recruiting's the key, man. And when, when you can, when you can, when you can layer talent, you particularly in bat. You know, the key in any sport, but particularly in basketball, since you you, know, you don't you don't have to field a you know a hundred man roster like in football. If you can recruit, and even if it's just average coaches and I don't. I'm not. I think we have great coaches, but even if you just have average coaches and you can recruit, you can you can win a lot of games in basketball if you can layer talent. Now we got guys that can coach and recruit. No, quite. All right. Uh, no, now that are we ready for Coach Julie Bubba? Yeah, let's hear it from the third year head coach of the Pirates, Joe Dooley. Uh, here's what uh, Coach had to say following the Pirates' 68-58 victory over Tulane. I thought we got off to a pretty good start. You know, our defense was, was good early. We were able to get some stops. Uh, got a little bit of an offensive rhythm to start the second half and got a little bit of a lead. And uh, I thought the guys, for the most part, did a good job following the game plan. Got a little stagnant at the end. Uh, but, uh, for the most part, I was pretty happy with our defense. Been better. And we did some good defense, you know, until we turned it over a little bit. But you just seem like you guys played kind of a solid all around game. Nothing really spectacular. Does this kind of show maybe that you can be kind of a balanced all around team if you don't play well? Yeah, I mean, I, I thought we had some, I thought that, you know, we had a bunch of guys that really good things. I thought we got some good energy off the bench from, from Tyree and from, from Batoma. And I thought our starters of a Brandon and JJ and our JJ had to practice for a couple of days. It was good to get him back out there. And, uh, he obviously has another weapon and stretches the floor for you. And, you know, obviously Jaden had 17 in the second half, but I, I thought our contributions off the bench, and I thought our, our guys did a nice job blocking defensively and trying to follow what we, we, have, we asked them to do. You're able to hold them to 35% shooting overall tonight. Pretty good defensive effort. Um, came on in the second half and, and pick up another conference win tonight. Yeah, well, I, I thought our defense, I mean, and it's, it's frustrating for coaches and for, you know, how do you give up so many easy baskets at the end? You know, it's hard to guard the dribble and not foul, which we did some. And, you know, if you're a coach and you're down, you're telling the guy to put your head down and get to the, get to the rim. We gave up some at the end. We gave up a three where we helped off a corner and those type of situations. We need to go up and, you know, we want to give up twos, not threes. So there's some things we can learn from. Uh, a little sluggish, you know, with a little lethargic passing the ball, I thought, in the second half against the press. So those are all things we can go back and learn from, you know, you, know, you can learn in victory, you can learn in defeat. So we'll take some of these good clips and show them and uh, you know, we'll take some of these things that we did poorly and we'll try to, you know, try to get better out when we come back. Just the balanced scoring and different guys stepping up at different times of the game. Obviously Jaden got off to a slow start, then he really helped you in the second half. Does that speak to, to where the team's at now and different guys can kind of step up at different times? Yeah, I, mean, I thought the, I thought the and, and Tyree gave us a good lift for the first half. You know, they, they balanced Jaden and have a great start and then you know, it was good to have JJ. We started JJ. He missed, and we we wanted to get him loose. And once we got him loose, we didn't want to sit down, so we started him, which is why Tristan didn't start. Uh, but I, I thought those guys gave us some energy off the bench. Big and Batoma did, and uh, I thought uh, you know JJ gave us a good lift. And then Jaden in the second half got going a little bit. Coach, you're starting to see uh, now this this program really develop seven and one now. And you're starting to win games you should win, and, and games the uh, 50-50 games. Uh, how do you feel moving forward in the conference play? Well, I mean, obviously, you know, it, will, it was good to get a first conference picture. I think uh, you know, I said this the other day, and I'll, you know, I, I think Coach Samson was talking about it. I think SMU is, is in the you know my top tier. I mean, they might be you know one, two, three. They can come in. They, they, agree, they can give anybody competition win league this year. And I thought we did some good things there. I thought tonight we, 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 you know, we, we had a pretty good game plan. The guys followed it. 
Uh, we did some things that I didn't think we were great at, but we were good. And I think we can still keep getting better, which is the good news. And we'll put this one behind us. We'll, we'll, we'll clean this up tonight, and we'll get ready for Wichita. And, and obviously, we see these guys in less than two weeks off. So we've got to, you know, we'll, we'll see about how things that they did to pick on us and some things that work for us. Coach, we didn't see uh, Coleman or Noah tonight. Is that just a, a matter of the rotation and shortening a bit with conference play coming? Well, yes and no. You know, Noah was, was banged up a little bit yesterday in practice. And then the problem with this deal is, as you saw, you know, Cross is really a, a four. And they played him at the five. So when they went small, we played uh, we played both, you know, Patumbo or Jaden as, as a five. But with Cross, because they're picking up and you can drive it. Uh, when when, uh, when Dave was in the game, it said just for the most part, we played Luigi in there, uh, you know, against him. We sort of played matchups, which, which helped us. And, uh those guys are both going to help us at some point during the season. Anybody else, guys? Coach, you just talked about this, this break, uh, the guys going home for a little bit for returning for uh, the Wichita game. I think everybody needs a break. You know, these guys have been here since July. i got to give them a lot of credit. They've, they've done what we've asked them to do. You know, they've been really good. Uh, these couple of days, I think they'll be able to put their feet up and, you know, we got some guys that are banged up like everybody does across the country. So we'll be able to get some rest, re-energize. And then, uh, you know, we start this, uh, the, you know, the 18 game of, you know, AAC conference play. So I think this will be really good for me from a mental standpoint as well as a uh, physical standpoint. I think it's just as important mentally that they get a chance to get away from a couple of days, and, you know, not have to hear the same voices and just be able to, to, to relax and enjoy themselves. This team's gaining confidence. Uh, how do you begin to parlay this on to the on the road when you start to hit the road in the AAC and try to find ways of avoiding ten minute, twelve minute gaps where they don't feel comfortable? I think to, I think yes, and you made us uncomfortable. I mean, I think it was their defense. I mean, you know, you, they, had, they had some things. I mean, now we also had a couple of situations. We missed two free throws that would have kept us hanging around. We had a you know, a situation where we had a, a fast break. We tried to get to the other side of the rim and supposed to just left-handed lay it up. And, and that was a big play that we didn't get any points. We had an advantage. We had two or three situations where we had advantages. So those are things we can correct. And, you know, you need a player or two to, to flip the other way. And then that, that can flip an entire game, as we all know. So uh, we, we talked about how it flipped the game negatively for us. Now, how do we flip those plays positively for ourselves? Else? All right, guys, have a good Christmas. All right, that's head coach Joe Dooley, Bubba, and uh, we have uh, Kyle back with us as well. I guess we'll get Jay back on here in a little bit, but uh, Coach Joe Dooley, post game after this afternoon's victory over Tulane, 68 58. And guys, uh, you know, Bubba, I mean, Kyle, you said it earlier. Uh, the scary thing about this team, and you said it a lot this season, is they haven't played their best. and Hey, oh, by the way, we're seven and one. Yeah, no, I don't think we on the office have been particularly. And, I, and I, we did some good things tonight, but it's like he said, uh, we played good, not great. And uh, I think uh, I think we're still not, you know, I, I think I, just by the what things you you can pick up on one of the things he says. Um, you know, I, I think he thinks we're pretty good. Um, you know, he, he didn't think we played bad at SMU. Really, he thought SMU is just a really good basketball team. Um, it'll be interesting to see how we play at Wichita. Uh, that was if we could go on the road and beat Wichita um, this early in the year, uh, that would make a huge statement to the rest of this conference. And hey, Kyle, on that road swing, we'll have Wichita and then right, Bubba. It's like a 10 day swing from today, and then we play Tulane again, uh, there in New Orleans. So, if you could find a way to, to win not only the Wichita State. We'll take one game at a time, I know, but then you have Tulane right back to back, right? Yeah, Tulane after Wichita, so you know yeah. we, we played well against them tonight. So you you, you figure um, I'm sure they'll have payback on their mind, and uh, it'll be a lot harder down there. But um, you know who knows if we can find a way to beat Wichita, we can start three and one in league play. But I uh, first things first, man. I'm, I'm sure. Uh, What's Wichita's record, uh, Bubba? Do you know? You're on mute, Bubba. Yeah, I'm, I, was, I was queuing the audio up, guys. I thought, um, but oh well, I didn't know. No, I know, but I, I told Dave just give me a moment to 
but y'all would have to check as far as which stuff they drinking. I, I know they got a big win at Tulsa the other night. Uh, so yeah, it's always a quality win, and that's a bit of a robbery. Um, so I, uh, it'd be nice if we could figure out a way to go, uh, go beat the Shockers. Maybe we can shock the Shockers, so to speak. And uh, we're going to shock the American. Hey, that'd be great. Good to have Jay back now. Jay, uh, that very thing, this road swing, very crucial. And if you look at the, the conference play, this is a stretch of games uh, starting with today. There's like four or five games here that if we can somehow, well, if you count Madison, so that's two two games, I would say. But there's some games coming up, three more games coming up that really need to win with uh, Wichita, Tulane, and then uh, USF back home on the ninth. Yeah, I mean, the Tulane game is going to be big because – it's the same team we face tonight. We know their strengths and weaknesses, but can we win on the road? So that's a game I really you know, want to see how we do in that one. And obviously Wichita State would be a huge win. But uh, I want to see how we respond in the rematch against Tulane. And it is a good stretch where if we can get off to a good start. Yeah, Jay cut out on us again with the uh, AT&T service in Eastern North Carolina. You guys there? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I just – I think if we get off to a good start in conference play, just like we did in the non-conference, it's going to just help us gain momentum, gain confidence um, with the start that we're on. But I think the next three really are crucial. And Neil Punt says the Shockers are three and two. Yeah, they're, they're three and two, us. and right now they are uh, trailing South Florida, who's been playing pretty well. They're, they're trailing in Tampa, 44-40, 13 minutes left in the ball game. Um, taking a look at their schedule. I, I talked about how they won 69-65 on the other night. And Tuesday night out at Tulsa, um, they had also beaten Oral Roberts 85-80. They had uh, lost 72-62 to Mizzou. And they had also lost to Oklahoma State 67-64. And, and then their um, their other victory came over a, a non-D1 um, Emporia State 73-57. So they got wins over Emporia State, Oral Roberts, and uh, and, and Tulsa. Okay, correct. All right. Uh, so so one good win there over Tulsa, but uh, and I know Oral Roberts have had some good teams in the past, but you know sometimes Oral Roberts sucks. Um, I uh, <laughs> I crack my own self up. Um, but the uh, the the Shocker is always a quality team, and I know they're struggling right now with their head coach situation. And, um, you know, unfortunately, they had some, some controversy there. But uh, it, it would still be a huge win. We're repeating ourselves getting redundant. But it would be a huge win for the Pirates if they could go on the road to Wichita and, and find a way to beat the Shockers. It would be, uh, I think, a, um, I think this early in the year, like I don't want to say it would be a watershed moment for the program because Dooley's already had some big wins. But if you could do it in this atmosphere where you're winning other ball games, where it's just not a – a lone on the road upset. He, he would make a big statement. Yeah, it would be right there with the, the Cincinnati victory from year one, and then the, the SMU win from a season ago. It, uh, it would certainly turn some heads, even with everything that Wichita State's going through. The fact that it, the fact that it was uh, at Wichita. Yeah, and I think it would mean more than both of those games, Bubba, because we're, yeah, on the road. Yeah, it, well, not only that, we already have seven wins. I, I don't think it would be. I think it would be a legit win rather than just a, than an upset. I don't even know yeah. if we win that game. I don't even know if it would be a true upset. I, I You know, I, it's going to be to see what the spread is. I, I wouldn't be surprised if that's only about a five-point spread in that game. I agree. Um, and you make an excellent point. I mean, you don't feel like it's a flash in the pan. You don't feel like you have to play um, out of your rear end, so to speak, to shoot, you know, shoot some ungodly percentage and to have the opportunity to win the ball game. Um, but um, right now, uh, let's go ahead and go to the comments from Jaden Gardner. I um, caught up with him after the game via Zoom. And Jaden uh, talked about um, a variety of topics as Jaden finished with 21 and 10 tonight against Tulane. Jaden, you got off to a little bit of a slow start tonight, then came on late. Uh, talk about your patience level tonight and kind of just waiting for things to come to you later in the game. I'm a patient guy, I'm a tough guy. I was just, my team was winning. That was the main thing. We up by seven. Everybody was eating, and uh, Andrews came to be slow with that. So some nights you're going to start off strong, and some nights you're going to start off in the second half. And my half was the second half, but we was winning at the end of the day. And the end of the, end of the day, just get the W, and me and my teammates executed really well. 
Jaden, does a game like this kind of show how all around you guys can be? I mean, solid defense, everybody kind of chipping in, doing a little bit of everything. Yeah, our defense, Coach said earlier, our defense was terrific. We had a lot of tough shots. Credit them. We had a lot of tough shots. On first half, I feel like almost half your shots were tough shots, contested shots, late, late clock shots. And our defense was solid all, all day. And uh, once we started to pick apart the match, like song, we started to gain a lead. So that thing that was big, our defense never focused. You were leading for almost the entire game in this game. What was that like? Is this team kind of getting used to, to, to being in front and putting teams away, that type of thing? Yeah, I mean, we're still learning. We're still learning how to win. And win in different ways. Uh, I say probably most of our games this season, we trailed and had to come back and uh, started the second half or something like that. But this game, we were able to get control up by one, up by two, and start to gradually increase the lead. And this play was a different way to win. We were playing with a lead. And we're trying to kill clock. We're also trying to come back in the game. So we had to uh, make sure we didn't uh, ease off the brakes too much. Thank you, guys. There's four guys, almost four guys, or four double figures. Double yeah, man. Um, our, our offense, offense, we're getting, everyone's gotten better in the offense. JJ, Suns, Tristan, Shaman. Luigi, everyone's gotten better. And so when they get better and they get used to playing American Conference, like the talent, or it's talent anywhere in college, college basketball, other guys didn't play D1 basketball. So now they, now they know how they're going to get their shots, what they got to do to get open. So I think everyone's confidence is at an all time high. And when we, now we're starting locking on our defense, when we get both, it'll tell them how we can go. Jaden, this is a little silly, so bear with me, but for this East Carolina basketball team, you guys get a couple of days off for Christmas before you face off the institution. What does the East Carolina basketball team want for Christmas to, 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 to bring good basketball play into the upcoming game? Oh, the East basketball team wants to get for Christmas is to go to the NCAA tournament. That's all we want. That's all we want. So all set up. Uh, we've been pretty nice. Um, we shouldn't have a lot of cold, so we should have a nice little present coming in March. So uh, what do you expect to do during the break here uh, as you guys begin to try to recharge a little bit before you head into the, the bulk of the AAC season? Our coach said get off our feet. Um, as you know, North Carolina, going home. Uh, so uh, just said uh, if you get a jog in or get on a elliptical bike, just get some pace in. One of the two, three days that we're off, just to keep keep your win. Uh, we're going to do that. But um, we're coming back to 26, have three days to prepare for our road trip to Wichita, and then on the plane again. Uh, it's about it's about resting right now and doing things that matter. And um, it's good to see the family. Uh, it's been a tough sacrifice for everybody in college basketball. Not seeing our family, not being able to do a traditional thing. So it's it's nice to nice to value your family. Get to go home with my family. Christmas, all I got. I think it's a big part. There you have the post-game comments of East Carolina junior forward Jaden Garner following the Pirates 58-58 win over to on Tuesday afternoon. Yeah, what a uh, big performance to him. He had just four points in the first half, and then he guys ended up with 21 points. Yeah, nice performance by Tristan. And uh, you can see he's clearly happy to be going home for Christmas um, and get to see his family. I, I think all the boys have been here since the spring and hadn't been home. So uh, a long time in between seeing your family. So uh, just hopefully everybody has a good Christmas and uh, no issues with COVID. Yeah, no doubt about it. And um, here in just a moment, um, guys, I'll have some audio from the post game with JJ Miles, who finished with 13 tonight. That'll be dynamite. <laughs> I, just, well, I just cracked myself up. If you guys don't pop at my jokes, I don't care. <laughs> I, I cracked myself up. I was laughing. For some reason, I had a laugh. Dave's got lag. Jay was laughing to himself. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's just my service. <laughs> I don't mind. Guys, uh, yeah. 
we're queuing the audio up. Uh, uh, Jay, uh, what, what are you doing for Christmas, man? You, you see your family? You, you, you stay in quarantine? Yeah. What are you doing? I'm uh, laying low with the family, just going to relax. My leg, my leg is still recovering from my surgery, my big fall. So yeah, just going to rest up and, and uh, get ready for, for the new year. Okay. All right. Dave, All right. Can, are, we, are we ready? Uh, are we ready for the, ready for the audio? No, not yet. Um, All right, well, we'll Jay, talk. Jay, Jay, you were also on the call for, for today's East Carolina women's game. Um, the Pirates were victorious over Tulane, um, get, getting a 5-3, and 3-0 three, three and in the American. And uh, for a sec second consecutive game, it was awesome to see the ladies score in the 70s because that's really been their uh, their Achilles heel early on here. Uh, e even though they're winning games, they're being competitive, and they just weren't able to uh, really put the ball in the basket. Yeah, I mean, LaShonda Monk and uh, Thompson today had really good games, and Tulane was picked preseason third in the conference. At ECU, uh, just like the men's team, they've improved so much, and they had a big victory on Sunday against Cincinnati and a quick turnaround, and it's impressive what they did today to get the win. Yeah, we've had some big wins in ladies basketball. Cincinnati, Tulane, VCU, who was preseason ATN favorite, and on the road to UVA. I, I, think, I think the girls – legitimately have a shot to make the NCAA tournament. No question about it. Um, Dave, uh, as we're waiting to queue up the audio, I'm yeah. just tell me to shut up if it's ready. Um, Dave, you, uh, as, we, as we sit here in BS, so your kids are your kids are going to be there for Christmas Eve? You, you got That's any correct. plans for Christmas? Just uh, spending time with the family, low-key, and uh, that's what I love to do is uh, spend time with them, quality time, as they say, and uh, try not to eat too much. I've been doing uh, a lot better with that recently, so I'm gonna wow, keep man, that. You got, you got, you got to, for Christmas. You got to say, you got to say the heck with that, and just go ahead and eat what you want, baby. I mean, it's Christmas. You got to, you got to throw it down. Some more about the women's game, uh, guys. Stuff I was going to chime in with some uh, individual numbers. We had Tania Thompson uh, following up what um, Lashonda Monk did the other night up at, or other afternoon up at Cincinnati. When she had 30, Tania Thompson uh, nearly matched her. Uh, Tania finished with 27. And uh, we also had Sierra DaCosta, LaShonda Monk, and Maddie Moore also scoring uh, double figures for the Pirates. Um, DaCosta had 18, Monk had 12, and Maddie Moore had 10. Um, and the ladies will um, not return to action now until January 2nd. Wow. When, they'll when, they'll, when they'll travel down to Tampa to take on number 20 USF, who was victorious tonight. Um, the Bulls defeated Cincinnati by 12 and uh, are now 5-1. and one. And I believe their only loss uh, came to Baylor. And everybody who knows anything about women's basketball knows what uh, yeah. Baylor has been. And I, I think that loss was only by about four or five points. So tall task the next, next time out on January 2nd down at USF, which is going to be a top 20 team um, from all indications when the Pirates travel to Tampa. Yeah, good measuring sick game. If we could go down there and uh, not even – if you can win it, oh my goodness, but if you can go down there and just and battle them and play a close game, you, you really like your chances in the rest of the league play. Um, right now let's hear from J.P. Miles. And um, here's that audio from the East Carolina shooting guard or uh, three man, JJ Miles. Hey, question for him. JJ, how did it feel to be back tonight to finish in the last game and contribute to help the team win? Oh, it felt good to be back, you know what I'm saying? Get back in rhythm with the team, you know what I'm saying? Get flow back, team cameras back. What about making the, your first shot with the first points of the game? Uh, did that kind of help you set a line, especially since you, you did miss the last one? Oh, yes, sir. Like, Coach told us, like, we cut, we're going to be open. And appreciate my teammate finding me open to get me going early. You guys are winning some games here. Um, coming into the Christmas holiday season now, you only have one loss. What's that do for your confidence as you uh, head into the conference play? You know what I'm saying? We struggled, like, out of conference uh, last year. So, uh, like, winning these games, getting back one and one in conference, uh, give us confidence going to Christmas, right? How about that seven and one going into the year? How do you feel about next year for 
I know Jaden said for Christmas he wants to, to go to the big dance, March Madness. You guys are uh, feeling really good right now. Yes, sir. That's a plan to get to the big dance anyway, so take it one day at a time and practice. We'll get there. JJ, how can you describe the defensive intensity tonight? It seemed like you guys really kind of got after them. and They, they seem pretty frustrated at times. Oh, yeah, you know, you know what I'm saying? Coach always uh, emphasized defense, so we try to um, clean it up on their hands, but we know offense they give and stuff, though. So what is it you guys figured out from the first half to the second half? All of a sudden you got a working margin hook in there and uh, and seemed to go ahead and put them away. Well, you know what I'm saying? We, uh, you know what I'm saying? The type of defense they play kind of like slow you up. So we just uh, had to be smart with the ball, make smart plays for the end. JJ, last year it seemed like your game was more perimeter oriented. Talk, talk about the way you and Batumba and then also Pig, the way you guys attack the basket and pass the ball in the interior. Well, you know, uh, with coronavirus, we had a lot of time to work on skill work, you know what I'm saying? We older guys, and that's like, you know what I'm saying? We're working on being more aggressive with smart with it. There you have the post game comments from East Carolina. East Carolina, I think I misspoke a moment ago. I said junior on senior JJ Miles, but hopefully JJ will be back in the 2021 2022 season um, as he will, of course, um, retain this year's eligibility. Yeah, it's a three year, guys. So it is kind of like, uh, if you will, a junior year, isn't it, Bubba? So you were kind of right. I'm trying to bail you out there, but uh, yeah. it is kind of like a junior year. Yep, from JJ is shooting the basketball so well, and I, I want to say I want to say he's finished yeah. something like um, maybe I don't know twelve out of his last seventeen from three point range, and he's, he's really shooting the ball well. Hopefully, it will continue. <clears throat> no doubt about it. It's going to be fantastic, Jay. What uh, before we let you go? What are your thoughts uh, with this team moving ahead? You've seen the. The team enough, I think, uh, enough early on with non-conference, certainly with the conference now. Uh, what do you think? I, I mean, I think if there's one word, I'd say it's excitement. I think the team is only going to get better, and the the basis of, of, you know, these wins is defense. And the offense, you know, they're going to have nights where they're you know, playing outstanding, the nights where maybe they're not, but they're always going to have that defense if they can keep it up. And I just think this is a team – that was picked in the bottom of the league in the conference and preseason. I think they can finish way better than they were predicted. And you know, I'm just excited for the future of the program. No doubt. It was uh, the prediction, obviously, was ninth, Bubba and Jay. I, I know Bubba, I told you, I thought that we finished sixth. I don't know if Jay knew that. That was my prediction. I think we'll finish sixth in the league out of 11 teams. So. Uh, Bubba, what do you? How you feeling now? Do you still feel like we'll have a chance to middle of the pack? I really do. Uh, I, I could see us being potentially as high as maybe fourth or fifth. Uh, I, I think fifth to seventh, um, somewhere in there. I, I really don't think we'll finish ninth. Um, and talking about some others that are turning some heads, uh, UCF is really playing some quality basketball. And the Knights have already defeated Auburn. Number 15, Florida State in Tallahassee. And then also uh, today they won um, against Cincinnati. I believe that was played down in Orlando. Yeah, you know that Johnny Dawkins is uh, a good uh, good fit, I think, for Orlando. It's very easy. that He's a good recruiter. How hard, Jay, how hard is it to recruit a player to Orlando? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not like <laughs> Idaho. There's nothing wrong with Idaho. Uh, so, don't know email. Uh, but there's a lot well, to do in Orlando, man. Yeah, I mean, uh, I guess it's not not good if you want if you want all four seasons <laughs> to to see snow and see winter. Right. Orlando is pretty nice though, but that's a good place. And Johnny Dawkins has recruited at a high level. No doubt, and uh, we'll see how they how, how their season goes. Bubba, I know that our next game is. I mean, you mentioned my dad's 75th birthday next Wednesday night. And hopefully, he, I know he wants the Pirates to win, so hopefully we can get him a birthday present. A gift there next Wednesday night at 6 on ESPN+. Plus. Of course, the uh, that'll be the tip-off, 5.30 airtime with Jeff Charles and Ty Seymour, our good friends from the 
uh, Pirate Sports Radio Network, the Learfield IMG College. How about that, Bubba? I got it right, finally. Um, they change the name so much like the underwear, so it's hard for me to keep up with the, the time, so to speak. But good luck to the Pirates. Nice little break they're going to have over the next uh, eight days. And like Coach said, put their feet up. And, Jay, I just want to personally thank you, brother. Appreciate you so much. You mean a lot to the show and to us personally. And uh, appreciate all that you've done for us. I hope that you can uh, put your legs up uh, figuratively and literally and get a chance <laughs> to get more rest. And I know you're chomping at the bit, man, to get back to where you can run sprints again and uh, yeah. run the football field. Yeah, no, I know. I can't wait to get back in shape and anyways, get back to my normal self. But uh, I appreciate you guys so much having me on and I love you guys. And you guys have always been so great to me and I just appreciate you guys and everything you've done for me. So thanks so much and look forward to talking to you both soon. No doubt. You keep growing up. You, uh, you're you growing up as a broadcaster and certainly climbing the ladder. Hopefully you'll never forget us. Uh, the <laughs> Low on the totem pole, so to speak. Uh, we're, we're all this together. We're, you, we're all we're all pirates and we're all uh, we're all doing our thing. So I'm proud of you guys. Thanks, man. We'll drive safe and uh, we'll be talking to you soon and we'll see you in 2021. Perfect. All right. I'll get my cell phone fixed. So I get better service. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> What a great guy, Bubba. Appreciate you, dude. I haven't had a chance to, uh, we didn't get a chance to wish Kyle, but wish you a very happy and safe holiday season. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Uh, your kids, uh, Reese and Riley, and obviously your awesome wife, Stacy, who is, uh, I know she puts up with you doing the uh, podcast. And I, I do love her too. Love you, Stacy. So, uh, anyway, I am being sincere. He's laughing at me, but I am being sincere when I say that. So, uh, we always, Bubba and I always joke that we live closer, um, that we would be hanging out and our kids are about the same age and he and I love to go to sporting events and he has good taste in music too. So maybe some concerts as well, but I appreciate all that you do, man, sincerely. And, uh, look forward to, we'll have some time here. Uh, maybe we'll do a broadcast or two before the game, but, uh, certainly looking forward to the overtime on the 28th. Uh, I keep saying the 28th on the 30th. Man, I got my dates mixed up. Yeah, me laughing had nothing to do with uh, questioning or doubting your sincerity, but uh, I, know, I appreciate that. Um, you know, just a Merry Christmas to Pirate Nation and anyone else that's tuned in. Uh, we yep. hope you and you and yours and uh, your family, friends, uh, have an excellent holiday season. And, and uh, we'll be talking to you here. Uh, probably a day or two after Christmas. So uh, over these next few days, uh, enjoy the time and, uh, you know, keep the main thing, the main thing, um, you know, spending time with your family and friends and uh, everything you're supposed to do this time of year, especially. No doubt. Don't eat too much. And uh, we'll see you very soon in the next few days. We'll take a little bit of a break ourselves. We'll prop our legs up Bubba and uh, we'll get out of here. Pirates with a big victory. Once again, 68, 58 home, uh, this afternoon, and that being at Williams Arena, Menji's Coliseum. Good luck to them next week. And until next time, we'll see you and go Pirates. <laughs>